Hey, what's up guys? Mikey here. After being a Spongebob fan for so long, I decided to finally try to figure out what caused the downfall of Spongebob so many years ago. I've been researching for so long, I must have dozed off. Although I think I wasted more time than I should have, I think I figured out the root cause of it all. And the answer is quite surprising. The real reason Spongebob went downhill is... Spongebob has been on the air for so long because of how wacky the show is both in terms of the characters and the core concept. But not every show can be on top all the time, whether we're talking about the quality of the show being consistent throughout its entire life, or its popularity. Everybody's aware of the decline in quality, and I've seen a fair amount of people talk about it themselves, but I wanted to try to dig deep and figure this out for myself. Before I get into this, I have to say this is just speculation on my part, and I could be wrong. Now that that's out of the way, let's go all the way back to 2004. Spongebob was in Season 3 in 2004, and the Spongebob Squarepants movie was in production too. The movie came out on November 19, 2004 in the United States and was a box office success. After the movie came out, Steven Hellenberg wanted to end the series to avoid oversaturation and jumping the shark, but the success of the film made Nickelodeon want to keep the show going. So Hillenburg stepped down from his position as showrunner and gave Paul Tibbet, a writer and storyboard director since the beginning of the series, his position as he was one of his favorite writers and he trusted Tibbet as showrunner. However, he was still credited as executive producer in the end credits when he was no longer on the team and he did have a small advisory role at this time. In addition to Hillenburg's departure, several of the writers and storyboard directors left as well and Nickelodeon hired a few new crew members. On May 6, 2005, the series returned with Season 4, starting off with Episodes 118, Fear of a Krabby Patty, and 119, Shell of a Man. When these episodes aired, fans noticed that something kind of felt off about the series. The most notable difference is that Spongebob's voice was much higher pitched at this point. This was done possibly to attract younger viewers, but this deterred some of the older fans from watching. Additionally, some of the characters started to act differently than how they usually did. One of the most notable differences is that Sandy was much more of a scientist and did a lot less karate than in previous seasons. Season 4 gathered in a bit of a mixed reaction at the time. Some fans didn't like it and just stopped watching, and others thought that while it felt kinda different, it was still enjoyable. These days, opinions have turned around, but we're talking about 2005 here. As the season went on, some episodes got worse, but far from legitimately terrible. Season 5 came out in 2007, and similar to Season 4, there were mixed opinions from fans, but here, the episodes themselves seemed to fluctuate a lot more. Season 5 was able to reach higher highs and lower lows with the quality of its episodes compared to Season 4. While there were still some crew members from the earliest years in Season 4, almost all of them were gone by Season 5. More people stopped watching here compared to Season 4, but there were still some fans who held on to the series, but this was nothing compared to what happened next. Season 6 came out in 2008 and started off okay enough, but it didn't take long for the season to get worse. This season is generally considered the biggest ratings drop throughout the show's life. When Season 7 and 8 came out in 2009 and 2011 respectively, the poor quality continued with these seasons. During this time, the flaws of the post-movie slash pre-sequel era of Spongebob were much more obvious, and the worst episodes of these seasons are considered the worst episodes of Spongebob. The show at this point focused much more on gross-out humor and devolved the characters and, more or less, a lack of original and or creative episode ideas. Personally, I can agree with the first two points, but the final point while it can show at times, I'd still be willing to counteract this point more so than the others. However, this is the point with the program where people started saying things like, Oh, this is the worst episode of Spongebob. Or, Oh, this episode ruined Spongebob for me. Or, Oh, Spongebob is completely garbage now that this episode exists. But don't be fooled. Even with all the bad episodes that came out at this time, Spongebob was still far from the worst program of all time at this point. Hi, it's Mikey interrupting Mikey for something important I feel I need to say. 
Even though the episodes during this time were considered bad, I will say that no matter how bad the episodes might be, they could be worse. Just look at Family Guy or The Simpsons. Something else everybody overlooks is that there are good and memorable episodes during the worst seasons. I will admit that the bad episodes can overshadow the good episodes during this time, which might make people think every episode from these seasons are garbage, which is not true. I will say that some of these episodes from these seasons aren't as bad as people claim they are, but that's a topic for another time. In 2012, a sequel to the SpongeBob SquarePants movie was announced and Season 9 premiered. During Season 9, there was a gradual improvement despite the fact that there were indeed a couple sinkers, but the quality started to improve slightly at this time. Season 9 halted production after episode 360, Spongebob You're Fired, to work on the new movie, later titled the Spongebob movie Sponge Out of Water. Steven Hillenburg returned to help with the new film, and later returned to the series after the movie, which was also a box office success. Starting with episode 361, Lost in Bikini Bottom, Hillenburg was officially back on the series and the quality rose much faster at this point and is more consistent to this day, although not as good as the pre-movie slash pre-sequel era. So that was basically the time when the series went downhill in terms of its quality and let's now analyze the possibilities on what caused that decline. Starting with season 4, there were new writers, although a writer who wrote some of the best episodes of the show was now in charge. Tibbet worked closely with Hillenburg from 1999 to 2004 and knew him well, so he had a good idea on Hillenburg's vision for the show and continued to follow his guidelines. While the new writers did that well, the characters weren't written as consistently as they were in seasons 1, 2, and 3. Some of the writers also weren't as experienced with that style of writing the previous crew did. Despite this, they were still able to make some amazing episodes, a few of which truly feel like they could actually fit in with the best seasons of the show with how great they are. A couple easy examples are episodes 132, Krusty Towers from season 4, and episode 166, Crabs a la mode from season 5. Seasons 1, 2, and 3 also had 20 half hour slash production episodes and seasons 4 and 5 continued this pattern. Starting with season 6, Nickelodeon ordered 26 production episodes instead of 20. Therefore, the crew, which had some writers coming and going, had more episodes to produce and possibly a tighter deadline to finish the increasing number of episodes with a group of characters that were gradually losing focus on their entire personalities. With factors like this, they might have had to rush some episodes out and they might not have turned out the way the crew had wanted them to. Season 6, 7, and 8 all had 26 half hours each, which all required more focus than seasons 4 and 5 had. Season 9 also had 26 production episodes, but the crew stopped after the first 11 to shift focus on the movie, and the final 15 were produced after the film. Season 10 had only 11 production episodes, and is currently the shortest season of the show, which means more focus can go into each episode. While seasons 11 and 12 went back to 26 half hours, the crew, which consisted of a few members from the earliest seasons and some new writers who knew about the quote-unquote classic seasons, struck a balance with standard characterization with the characters and comedy, which is important for all the seasons and episodes. Also, with a show going on as long as Spongebob, it will get increasingly harder and harder to come up with new and fresh ideas, which can lead to old ideas getting reused and tweaked. Although I can see how some ideas get reused, whether it's in season 7 or season 10, I think that it's not as bad as some people make it out to be. I also think that there are more original ideas during the worst seasons of Spongebob that some people claim there are. So after everything I just covered, what was the reason Spongebob went downhill? Was it the original creator leaving and the crew members coming and going? Was it Nickelodeon ordering more episodes per season? Was it the lack of original ideas? After all my research and rambling, I've come to the conclusion that the real reason Spongebob went downhill is... The fans themselves. Before you start to hate me, let me explain my reasoning. Yes, I'm aware of the worst episodes of the series, but I feel the real problem isn't those bad episodes. It's the way people react to those bad episodes. There are four types of Spongebob fans. 
The fans that are biased towards seasons 1, 2, and 3 and the Spongebob Squarepants movie who only like those episodes and say everything after the previously mentioned movie is terrible. The fans that are biased towards Steven Hillenburg and say seasons 1, 2, 3, the Spongebob Squarepants movie, the Spongebob movie Sponge Out of Water, the last 29 episodes of season 9, seasons 10, 11, and at the very least the part of season 12 he oversaw before he passed away are good and everything else is bad because he wasn't directly involved. The fans who look at every episode critically and find that not all episodes from seasons 6, 7, and 8 are as bad as everybody makes them out to be. And the diehard Spongebob fanboy that loves every episode, good or bad. That's me! Just because these episodes are bad, that doesn't mean you have to watch them. If you watch a bad episode out of curiosity and end up not liking it, you don't have to watch it again. Just because the worst episodes exist, that shouldn't automatically ruin the entire series. There are still some amazing episodes that do exist within the worst seasons of the show. For example, there's episode 236, Sandcastles in the Sand from season 6, episode 280, The Abrasive Side from season 7, and episode 324, Planet of the Jellyfish from season 8. With a show going on as long as Spongebob, new risks have to be taken to keep people engaged, and Spongebob has never been a stranger to trying new things, at least within sticking to the creator's rules and guidelines. Personally, I feel that any idea can work as an episode, but it depends on the execution, which is another reason why people overreact to the bad episodes. Also, I've seen people unanimously call episode 70, Band Geeks from season 2, the best Spongebob episode of all time. I've seen people constantly saying episodes like episode 205, The Splinter, 219, Choir Boys from season 6, 253, A Pal for Gary, 263, One Course Meal from Season 7, 314, Pet Sitter Pad, or 323, Are You Happy Now from Season 8 to be the worst episode of all time. Look up a top 10 of the worst Spongebob episodes. The episodes will almost always make the list. People seem to make up their mind on the best episode, but not the worst. Make your mind up! Everybody's entitled to their opinion on what they would say the best or worst episode, character, season, movie, etc. would be. I respect that. Opinions are not facts. People can share the same opinions, but that doesn't give people the right to shove their opinions down other people's throats. What are you looking at? As I previously mentioned, there are some great episodes from even the worst seasons of the show, but everybody claims all those episodes are bad because of assumptions, or they just group all those episodes together. Similarly, there are some bad episodes in the best seasons. For example, there's episode 74, I'm with Stupid from season 2, and episode 107, The Great Snail Race from season 3, and yet people claim they're good because they're part of the seasons everybody loves. I have so much respect for the fans who watch episodes critically because they find good episodes in the bad seasons or find a little bit of good in the worst episodes. Seasons 1, 2, and 3 may be the best seasons, but that doesn't mean every season will be able to live up to those standards, and not every single episode can live up to the quality of band geeks. Look at how many there are! To wrap up my thoughts, no matter how good or bad an episode might be, people seem to overreact to it when there's absolutely no reason to. Just because it exists, that doesn't mean you have to watch it if you don't like it. There's no reason to attack people for stating their opinions, like me. Ow. I definitely upset a few people by talking about them this way, but when you think about it, it's true. No matter how popular the show may be or how amazing its episodes can be, just one or a few bad episodes shouldn't make people act this way. People shouldn't automatically hate the show or the writers just because of a few bad episodes that came out, and they shouldn't just rant about it nonstop either. There's no real reason to. Don't like the episode? Don't watch it. It's as simple as that. Although, if this message was able to reach out to the fandom and talk some sense into the hypocrites, that means I was able to communicate a message to the masses, and that makes me feel like I actually was able to accomplish something. One week later. Turns out everybody hated me and thought I was a loser for saying that.